Hello everyone, my name's Tom. Hey, this week we're going to do some more body work. We're gonna to try to uh, take these fiberglass bumpers, which I've already cut up into thirds, but I'm going to be um, attaching them to the car and trying to blend them into the flares that were installed. So please stay tuned. Garage time. Okay, before we get going into ripping up the fiberglass bumpers some more, I wanted to talk about last week's video and uh, these seat brackets. So it was brought to my attention that um, the seats should not be taken lightly and that these brackets were, were not um, according to international standards. So just like I did on the roll bar, I'm trying to incorporate the international rules from FIA or the national rules from SCCA or PCA to design the best possible seat brackets. Now keep in mind, this is not a full-blown race car, but it doesn't mean that you should take safety lightly. Now, I, I absolutely believe these brackets are stronger than the factory brackets um, that were kind of cantilevered out from the edges and using those six millimeter screws. But I, you know, if I can do better, I will. And I really appreciate uh, some comments that were given to me um, from those who have, who have seen some accidents and uh, also have been inspectors in cars. So Uniflow and, uh, and Paul, thank you very much. I'm gonna be doing more research. I'm probably going to steer away from these and I'm not married to this design. It's, uh, you know, two or three hours worth of work. So in the grand scheme of things, this car is gonna be well over a thousand hours. And when it comes to safety, I will definitely look into it more. So I'm not gonna just dive right back into it today. Um, I'll work on the bumpers. You know, there's plenty of work to do on this car, but I will get back to it. Okay, here are some um, photos of two different uh, cars similar to mine. These have the Carrera R, this is actually a, a real Carrera RS. So it has the same flares as my car. And um, what I'm after is just that rear, the rear bumper fit here on the corner, how it follows the arch back here and how much it has a shelf to it. So here's the body and then, you know, it, 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 it stands proud of the body and then it blends in with the flare. And that's what I'm trying to adjust mine to do. So it's really just a matter of getting these aftermarket parts to sort of look like factory. There is a seal between the body and the bumper and I don't have that yet. So I'm gonna be, you know, kind of estimating the height on that. Here it is just, you know, really kind of stuck on there. I do have some spacers between the body. And then looking at this distance here where it overlaps compared to the car is one of the things that's important is, is getting this sort of shelf right. So it's about uniform width along the body and then it just mates up to the flare. The profile, you know, coming down here to the bumper is, is not bad. It looks like to me this angle here is a little bit uh, flatter than, than this angle where the um, fender leaves off. It's almost as if this corner just stands a little bit proud. So it might just need to be finessed a little bit to continue that arch across. It fits the car pretty pretty nicely, except right here, this lens is, is cracked. And so it, this corner here does stick out a little bit. And then the other concern is that this space right here is, is just too big. Here's a view from this car. And you can see how in the rear here, it doesn't extend past the deck lid very far. This is a photo from a different car and it is, Sticking out a little further in this view, but it doesn't appear to be quite that far. Don't want the bumper sticking out past the bumperettes. I mean, that's clearly not how it's supposed to be. So I'm going to be uh, slicing and dicing and getting this the way I want it. Okay, I like to use, you know, my, my ruler here to, to sort of keep a consistent arc. So if I hold the ruler on the ends, it's gonna follow a natural arc. And when I place that up against the car, um, there's a mismatch. So this arc isn't the same as this one, and it's just not very pleasing to the eye. So if I could kind of take off the top corner of this, I'm just gonna make a slice right here, fold it back, 
and then the whole bumper can probably come forward a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna wear double gloves and a mask when I cut fiberglass. Fiberglass is not that fun to work with because it's really itchy and uh, there's little fibers go everywhere. I'm also wearing a sweatshirt, kind of protect my arms. It's a pretty warm day today, but I guess I'll suffer. So I'll re-fiberglass this uh, closed and then make sure that the contour in this direction is right. And this one looks right. Shift it in just a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna try to solve this uh, severe kind of underbite problem. I, I really don't want this thing sticking out this far. Um, to me, it just doesn't look good. I like this distance right here, um, but I don't like this. So if this is, you know, one finger here, this is like, you know, practically, um, it's like three fingers. So I don't like that mismatch. Now, the only way to really fix that is to cut it right here. Because if I cut it here in the front, I'm gonna lose all this pre-shaped curvature. And I like the way it fits the flare. And if I cut it in the rear, it's got a corner on it. So the best place to cut it is right where it's flat. I'm just gonna cut clean through. I'm gonna take a measurement of how much I wanna reduce it and then just section it right in the middle. Who's afraid to cut anyways? Okay, I decided to take out three quarters of an inch of the length on this bumper, just so that the fit on the tail light there is a little bit better. And so this masking tape is uh, also three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to pick a straight section here, uh, tape it and then cut. So someone decided masking tape color was the was a good color for their car. Also, this big exhaust hole here, um, I'm not most likely I'm not going to use this. I think the best thing to do is fill it up while I'm doing the fiberglassing. Probably going to use some exhaust that just goes straight out the back. I'm just going to try to hold this down while I cut it. So now instead of a three piece bumper, I have like a six piece or five piece or something. It's like chicken nuggets. Here's the thickness of this uh, fiberglass. It's pretty consistent, probably uh, a little bit more than an eighth of an inch. So I think this is a much more manageable and, and pleasing shape. So I have a more consistent gap, you know, from side to rear. And uh, I just like it better. And then from down here, you can see that exhaust cut out, which I'll take care of. You can see the cut line here. You can probably just fix that with that masking tape, right? So I don't think my welder is going to help put this back together. So I have this uh, stuff for your boat, for boaters and their craft. So I opted for the uh, epoxy resin, which is I think a little bit different than regular resin. Uh, it's stronger and compatible with more different types of fiberglass or SMC. I'm not sure how this bumper was made. 
Okay, I've feathered these edges to almost a knife. So there's a strong chamfer on this side and this side's just cleaned up. So I'm gonna clean it with some acetone and then let it uh, evaporate and then start tackling it with the resin. Okay, before I mix the hardener, I'm gonna trim some uh, pieces of this cloth. I just cut a few uh, layers here, there's four different layers, um, and I'm just gonna kind of play it by ear once I get the resin mixed up. Okay, this product came with these mixing pumps. Um, this is, you know, five parts to one part, but I'm not gonna use these because I don't have, you know, a ton of material. So I don't wanna fill all the pumps up with material. I'm just gonna pour into this bucket. I'm just gonna make sure this is level. I've only done, you know, like two layers on the front and two on the back. And I just want to let this um, cure and hopefully hold its position. I mean, I have this giant clamp clamping it into position because this wants to spring back. So I'm just hopeful that I have enough on here to at least hold its shape. And then I can come back with additional layers once this cures. The same is true with this big exhaust cutout. It is, um, kind of holding its shape. I sort of did it freehand. It didn't have anything to really support the shape. So I just, uh, you know, kept uh, controlling it while it was drying and making sure there was no bubbles in it. I also reattached this bumper mount and uh, it was really loose before, partly because I cut through some of the uh, structure when I cut this into thirds. But I have a lot of excess here. It's gonna be trimmed off. But the uh, overall shape is, is pretty good. I have a few more layers on this one and a lot more resin uh, tucked in there. But this is, you know, roughly holding the correct shape so I don't have to use too much filler. I will be putting more uh, layers on once this cures. I just kind of keep uh, layering it up. I'd sort of rather be welding, but, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Okay, some of you guys uh, may know what this is. This is a uh, jumbo radio delete plate out of a 356. I am, um, you know, making these kind of as a, you know, a, a wall sign to go wherever you want it to go. Uh, it's a free gift for Patreon members. If you haven't received one and you are a Patreon member, please reach out to me. I'd love to get this to you. Um, this to me represents everything about Porsche, its origins in the 356 era and uh, the delete plate. So who needs a radio when you have a Porsche? Um, wonderful engine sounds, wonderful driving car. So to me, minimalistic is, uh, is the way it should be. And I think that's what Porsche intended. So radio delete plate. Um, if you want to join Patreon, you know, we're able to get exclusive content there. As soon as I get more time, I'll be adding more uh, content there. Also, all of my uh, templates that I've used to work on the 911 are there. So if you're building something similar and you want a shortcut, uh, that's an advantage for joining there as well. So uh, please consider free gift. All we ask is you pay the shipping. Okay, so finally a, uh, a shorter video. Um, got myself worked into a hole. I just don't have time to let this dry before I can unclamp it and so forth. Uh, these things take time, 
but we're starting to get some items checked off the list that are preventing me from getting this car painted. You probably think I'm crazy for cutting this bumper into a million pieces, and yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's not the norm, but I want it to fit well, and uh, to me, it's worth it, so we just keep cutting until we like it, right? Take care. <laughs> <laughs>